Quick truck talk here. Let's talk Texas. Uh, news came out last night from uh, Super K on Twitter about Texas pursuing, heavily pursuing uh, Pete Kwiatkowski, the uh, current defensive coordinator for the Washington Huskies football program up, up there in the Pacific Northwest. I uh, reached out to a buddy of mine, I call him a buddy. He's uh, another uh, passionate football fan like myself. He's got his own channel on, on his YouTube account, Fanatic Perspective. Uh, I talked to Steven on Twitter, just kind of uh, joking with him a little bit about when he's going to drop some content on the uh, current situation, the potential hire here for Steve, Sar for Steve Sarkeesian, uh, bringing Coach K down from Washington to the 40 acres. And uh, I think he's going to post post a little bit of that uh, here this afternoon. So he's probably going to dive a little bit deeper than I am right now. But just wanted to kind of talk very briefly about that. So you hear, hear the name, first of all, you think first thing you think of, at least for me anyways, first thing that comes to mind is – uh, Pac-12, Pac-12 defensive coordinator, right? You know, whoop de doo how, how great can that be? Well, like many of you, or most of you probably, I knew nothing about this guy, and the reason why is because, you know, like I already talked about, he played, he coaches for a Pac-12 team. Pac-12 plays late at night, nobody's staying up that late to watch Pac-12 football, let's just be real. Um, no, I mean, I don't know. Anyways, you, I mean, you guys might. I don't know. I, I normally don't catch very much Pac-12 football. So, again, heard this name, had to do my own research, figure some things out. First thing that stood out to me, 2015 to 2019, so five-year sample size, the Washington Huskies football program averaged, in those five seasons, 18 points per game under – Coach K as a defensive coordinator, and those same that same sample size, that same defense, uh, you know, th that 18 points per game put them or was good for ninth in the FBS in terms of total points allowed. So you know that's a pretty good indicator. You focus on points. Obviously, dive a lot deeper than that, but from the outside looking in, seems like a pretty good hire. Well, you dig even deeper. Uh, like I talked about my Horns 247 account, I have seen the weight that his name carries for the Washington Huskies program, their fan base, and you know the uh, a lot of people that are very, very close in the know in that program as well. So it seems like, again, just bird's eye view here, brief, brief look into the situation. Coach K is not only beloved, but or by that program, by that university, by its fan base. This guy seems to be, you know, the real deal based on just everything that I'm reading, everything that I've seen. Everybody from within that fan base, they all have the same thing to say. It's like they do not want to see this guy leave the program. They know how much he brings. Uh, and so anytime, really, that's a pretty good indicator. You get you get a universal perspective, like from, you know, every everybody within any particular fan base thinking and, and seeing things cohesively and all in agreement on, on certain, you know, controversial topics, you know, coaching, uh, coaching staff, uh, personnel, uh, you know, recruiting, just w whatever the case may be. Anytime you get a fan base all thinking – along the same lines and all agreeing with one another, that's a pretty good indicator that what they're saying is correct and accurate. So I'll trust that there. And I'll, you know, just to put a long story short, we'll say that, you know, it's pretty, pretty dang exciting to read about what this guy's done for that program. So to have him, what looks like in all likelihood coming down to join what I already know to be a great staff uh, and Steve Sarkeesian in Austin, uh, it's pretty exciting. So, you know, again, you, you get all these guys that that he's bringing in the, uh, like I talked about cohesiveness, the cohesiveness within the coaching staff that, you know, the, all these guys have familiarity with one another for the most part in one form or fashion. Uh, and so, you know, they can, they should be able to hypothetically hit the ground running and not have so, sort of this layover period in terms of trying to build a program, which if all these guys already are like-minded individuals, to me, that's, that's, you know that bodes well for the program where there's already loads of talent just ready to be ready to be recruited and developed 
Uh, and, you know, again, we talked about the Death Star. You know, it really, it just needs direction. The program needs somebody with a vision and who has experience dominating the power five level of college football, which not all Texas coaching staffs had in the past. Like, you know, I can think back to Charlie Strong in 2016, right before he got fired. We were excited about a guy named Sterling Gilbert, who at the time, who was the offensive coordinator for Tulsa. But like at the time, you know, when we we're hyping up this guy's name, the the highest level that he had coached at was was you know again Tulsa great program you know they do a, a great job at competing with what they're you know the hand that they're dealt but you know it's like Sterling Gilbert was no Steve Sarkeesian he's no he's no national champion offensive coordinator with you know a history and a reputation and, and a resume leading multiple other Power Five conference or you know conference schools across the country so. Uh, that's that's pretty much where I'm at with that. But, you know, talking about guys like Bo Davis, the more I read into his name, who's going to coach the defensive lineman uh, and, you know, hammer the recruiting trail based on everything I read, the more I see stuff about Bo Davis being one of the guys that Coach Saban holds near and dear to his heart because of what he's done as a developer of talent and as a recruiter. So it's like you get Coach Saban backing all these guys up, that's that's enough for me alone as a Texas fan, and you know, so I can get behind that if a guy like Saban is behind them as well. Uh, and so again, you know, I talked about before before I, w I was going to hype up the the Sarkeesian hire. I wanted to know who he was bringing along with him, and so he's already assembled a a, a staff top to bottom. There's one, you know, assuming Coach K from from Washington does come over and uh, head the DC job. There'll be, I think, one one position left available. It looks like, uh, I think, which I believe is going to be the inside linebackers or the linebacker room. That would be the only coaching vacancy left to fill there if uh, if if Coach K does fill the defensive coordinator void. But so you know, you just get the continuity and and you know all these guys who are like I said familiar with each other should be able to hit the ground running and and. You know, knowing what I know now about the staff that he's been able to assemble, I think the, the pieces are in place for Coach Sarkeesian not to have to focus on so much about micromanaging a program as opposed to just getting in there, installing his offense the way that he wants to construct it architecturally and and just, you know, instilling his culture. And so uh, that's, that's pretty much, I think that's pretty much where I'm at with that. Just wanted to kind of hit on that real quickly. Uh, yeah, again, you know, the sky's the limit. The The pieces are in place. So now there, I mean, there's, there's no excuses anymore. So time to go get it done.